I recently com completed a review of the Band 2 by Microsoft, and we had a number of emails asking how we thought it was compared to the Fitbit Surge. So I've been persuaded to complete another review, this time on the Fitbit Surge, and then we can look at the differences between the two. So on first impressions, the Fitbit Surge is more of a watch style than the Band 2, with a larger but black and white display. It has a more traditional molded watch strap with clasp. Setup again was very simple. I already have a Fitbit profile, so all I needed to do was to connect this via Bluetooth to my LG G4. On connection, it automatically updated the firm firmware on the Surge. The mono screen is by default white on black for its main readouts. Not as clear as a Band 2, but the text size is larger and can easily be read. It is a touch screen and you can swipe between the various stats from time to steps to heart rate, distance and calories. There are three buttons on the Surge, one on the left and two smaller ones on the right to access other features and functions. The left button will give you the options of alarm, settings, run, exercise and timer. Touching the screen on any of these will bring up the menu for them. More of course in settings than any other function, where you can turn on the backlight, Bluetooth and other features. The heart rate monitor is on the base of the Surge, together with a connector to charge it. The Surge feels comfortable to wear and the heart rate monitor both works well and appear to be accurate. The charging connection on the Surge is not as easy as the magnetic clip on the Band 2, but given its mono screen, battery life is far longer. As I said in my previous review, I did not really want a watch style fitness band, but having now worn it for over a week, I've got quite used to it, and I no longer see this as an issue for me. The information screens I feel are laid out well, and give me quickly the information on steps, heart rate, calories that I want. It does not show battery status on these screens, rather it shows you as you access other features. But given it shows on the dashboard on your smartphone when you use the app, then this is, I believe, more useful. And this perhaps brings me on to what I consider to be one of the Fitbit's main strengths, its dashboard, which can be accessed via a PC, tablet, or more likely your smartphone. This clearly gives me all the information I require, and I can quickly move between days for comparison and look at other friends with Fitbits to see their progress also. This is a great motivational tool. Whilst the Band 2 gives me in effect the same information, it was not as easy to access your weekly and monthly progress and compare this to your peer peers. The Surge has built-in GPS, so if you select a hike, for example, from exercise, it will link to GPS and plot your route. Whilst it also monitors your heart rate and calories burn and will summarize these at the end of the session, including average heart rate. Again, subjects will interest you, the Band 2 I consider has the advantage as it would also show peak heart rate as well as average, so better to assess the workout. The surge will vibrate when you hit your target steps, 10,000 in my case. I'm not convinced the surge is as accurate over these steps due to the general arm movement as my previous Fitbit 1 was, which I used to carry in my pocket. You could, for example, be sat down of an evening, but still see some increase in your step count by arm movement if you were eating, reading, or even grabbing for the TV remote. It is, however, probably not significant enough to be a big issue. The surge should vibrate as you get text messages, etc. But whilst I had easily connected it to my G4 to transmit data back to the app, I did not seem to find success in getting it to give me the alerts when emails or messages came in. A quick call to technical support would, I'm sure, solve this. So in summary, I had previously discounted the Surge as an option for me, but was impressed with its clarity of information, battery life, and found it comfortable to wear. It has a clear lead over the Band 2 in the way that it reports your data and its ability to share this with others. The Band 2, however, is for the price much better featured, with a brilliant display, and I feel is a better design. I expect more features to be added via firmware and updates such as payment systems to be coming to the future. The Band 2 would have been my choice if only I could have back the dashboard and summaries from the Fitbit. Microsoft, are you listening?